All right. Uh, welcome to the uh, Community Service Advisory Board meeting, March 16th, 2023. Uh, do quick introductions since we have a couple new faces. Art Dillon, I'm the current chair. Rick Murphy, I'm on the board. Karen Stewart, Town Council Liaison. Trish Brigham, Vice Chair. Uh, Emily Loader, Recording Secretary. Alex Marshall, at large. Amanda Doherty, second alternate. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, member. Director of Community Services. Yep. So um, since we're shy a couple uh, members today, all alternate members will be able to vote. I mean, you're always welcome to chime in on anything and encourage you to do so. But uh, just parliamentary rules. All right, um, we've done attendance. Um, has everyone had a chance to look at last month's meeting minutes? Okay, we'll take a motion to approve such. Okay. Several. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. Emily, I'll take second. that as a second. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Seeing none. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. All right. Open the floor to citizens' comments. Seeing no citizens attending today. We'll close that. Item number five, council liaison update. Erin. Sure. Go slow. <laughs> so, well, so that's true. So I think the last time we were here, I was not even aware that the parks and facility plan was coming before town council to be approved. That's how quickly and out of the loop I maybe was, and that's why I didn't bring it up last month. But since we last met, town council approved the parks and facility master plan, and part of their decision was to kick the plan back to this advisory board and specifically look for you guys for input. Um, I sent you that really long email. We don't, I mean, we're going to have a consultant as well. So I think it's just kind of let you know like what the consultant's going to be doing and things like that. Um, and so that's going on with that. I mean, I think we're going to be doing the budget here. And when you say consultant, in what regard for us or? No, we're going to have to consult with the ad hoc. Sorry. Yeah. yeah so we'll be hiring. Todd's our consultant here. Yeah. So that's. <laughs> Well, I haven't been getting all the news. Dirt. We'll be putting out an RFP in the next month, yeah. and then to hire a firm to be the consultant for the, the ad hoc, for, well, for the community center feasibility and design, and then that'll be the servant to the ad hoc committee. Like that stuff will get vetted through the ad hoc. Yeah, well, we're gonna talk about that. Sure. Yeah. Sure. It, so we're hiring the consultant before we know that we're definitely doing that. Let's talk about that after. I shouldn't have brought up the consultant, to be honest. So we're kicking back the parks and field thing, uh, the parks and facilities to you guys. And I think one of the things I just wanted to mention, which I did include in my email, was our chair, John Anderson, is actually from Virginia. And so in Fairfax County, this was something that they did. And they did it on a larger scale. But basically what they did was they sent it back to an advisory board. And so I think that was kind of John's reasoning. Um, I definitely championed. I was like, I think this board is capable of, you know, if giving advice in regards to what the priorities are and getting into the details of it. Um, so we'll address that more. So that's one of the things that happened. The exciting thing that happened last night was that they approved, we did the first round of approvals for the ad hoc community center committee. And so they decided they want to do it in two readings, but they literally had no questions. They had no qualms. They thought it was a great idea. And I think that's where I was saying is the is built into that is a consultant, which is in the, inevitably all that information is, I think, going to trickle down and help us with everything. Um, Did you say readings? Two readings. So what when, does that mean? When, so when something goes before town council, they'll do like a first reading okay. so the public can hear it, process it, and then they'll do a second reading. So then that gives maybe people who didn't know about it the first time the opportunity to come to the second meeting, make comments on it. Um, I don't know if they're circulating the charge yet i'll definitely forward it along to you guys so you can just take a peek at like what that committee is because i think what you'll see and what i mentioned last meeting is that we are going to have two members hopefully we can get two members that are interested to apply and to be on that um and when i was talking to todd i think that's a part of it is you know we want people with different backgrounds and it will depend on we're going to have three seats on the ad hoc 
for members from the 2018 ad hoc community center committee, which is a little bit different task and charge, but they did a lot of the work that we're going to use. So there's gonna be three seats. Depending on who's interested and who's coming back, then we'll kind of see what field, like what kind of specialties and interests and like what type of fields and specialties of people that we want to fill. Um, everyone has different backgrounds, so we don't want to end up with a bunch of number crunchers on a, on a board either. <laughs> um, so that's the ad hoc. So we'll circle back around with that probably next month. That's probably by our meeting next month. We'll have a better idea of a timeline and when the application will be online for people to fill it out. And then I'll be part of the committee that chooses those. Just one going, person. So it's going through the appointments committee. It is, yep. So I'm the chair of the appointments and negotiations committee. And that was one of the things that we put in it is that instead of the full town council doing it, we're going to do it on the appointments committee. And um, so I'll have a little sway maybe, we'll see, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, and then real quick, I just wanted to mention, and we will not talk about it tonight, I promise Art, is I'm doing an article for the leader next month, and the topic is going to be basically a community center. So it's going to be an article in support of a community center. I'm going to talk about the parks and facility plan, a community center. I have a couple ideas, and I think this isn't, I'm not going to be quoting anyone. I would love some ideas from you guys. I would hate for you guys to pick up the newspaper next month and go, well, why didn't Karen mention this? So if you have ideas, please email me. I have a lot of words I need to fill. I have some ideas, but I would love feedback from you guys. That's all I got. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Sorry. All right, item six, community service update. Now, if I could ask for, um, the only thing on my agenda tonight was to do the budget presentation that was requested but I would love five minutes to ask two questions to this board um, just quickly as instant feedback, if I, if I could. Uh, yeah. Um, one is um, finishing um, the development that we're looking to do Higgins Beach as a pilot program for carry and carry out this year, based on feedback and some comments and some challenges we've had there. And so I'm, I'm mocking that up, kind of what that would look like um, and seeing if it's something that, um, we want to bring to fruition. We've had a lot of trouble in the past where we can't keep the barrels empty on a regular basis, more household trash, a lot of challenges with to go. Everybody's getting Uber everything. And so it's like, and um, we're, we're creatures of, well, we're lazy. And so when somebody takes a pizza box, folds it in half, and it gets stuck in the mouth of a trash can. And so um, we've sent numerous staff, dozens of hours just emptying, cleaning empty barrels. And so, um, I've chatted with some of the folks in the Scarborough Dogs group, kind of vetting some of the challenges that, that would cause. And so I'm going to finish putting that out there, but I'm 99% leaning towards trying carrying out, carrying, carrying, carry out at Higgins Beach um, to see where it goes. Because um, I did meet with the association and it, they do agree. Um, probably 90% of the foot traffic comes from people that are staying in a home on that beach. So it's not a huge burden where like, at Heard or you know, on other beaches where people are coming and going to and from. We had good success taking the barrels off the beach at Heard Park, so we only have them in the parking lot, and that's worked out really well. We just added a couple of beach cleanings where my staff would check the beach for debris, but just like at state parks, people are more respected, respected, respectful, excuse me, and more understanding. So I think we're gonna tee it off as a pilot program to see how it goes this summer, but be prepared to flex, because we'll still be doing our normal barrel. So um, I just didn't know if anybody had any instant reaction to that. Like we can take it offline if there's any sort of comp, but I, we're getting ready for May 1st and it's something I need to kind of pull the trigger on, but. Um, so absolutely no barrels. That's what I'm planning on right now. Are there any there now? Yeah, so we have them at certain streets. Like we have them at the, the parking lot, the head of the stairs that go down the main entrance where yeah. the parking spots are. Yeah. And we used to have them on every road. And I started, well, I think we're down to like three roads um, versus the, the seven because people were stubborn, you know, contractors with their clippings and, you know, they were, it was just, they were nuisance barrels and so they, they went away. And so, um, so any of the ones that are out now, you want to just get rid of completely? We would do complete carry and carry out of Higgins for the summer and then add, add one or two hours a week of check-ins and supervisory stuff. Um, just Higgins. For this summer, yes. Because right now at Ferry, literally we have four barrels. 
in the parking lot. And at Pine Point, we have about 10, but they're all right in one spot. They're literally in the parking lot by him because I shouldn't say because of beats, but a lot of the material that Emma's produces, we support for their rental of that place. So um, it would just be Higgins Beach as a pilot. If I had my way, we'd be doing it across the board. The cost is becoming an astronomical. Um, so this would kind of be the test for the beaches. Did you say you talked to a dog owner group? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so, their response? Um, again, just like anything else, they're concerned with people leaving. Right. You know what I mean? Just leaving piles. And I'm like, well, they do that. And here's, here's my answer was, with all due respect, they do that now. Mm -hmm. So if one person puts a bag on top of the trash can, it turns into a Christmas tree. So it's it's um, it's happening now anyways. And so we couldn't have enough barrels to deal with what's coming. And so it's a culture shift. It's an educational piece. And so it's something that I need to decide um, by the beginning of April so we can spend a month with outreach and follow up. And um, the key would be to use the word pilot because if, it's, if it causes negative consequences, then we'll, we'll flex, you know. Um, but we do have to give it time and see how the first time we get the barrels away at her park, it was constant. Where's my barrel? Where's my barrel? And I'm like, your barrel has been empty for two weeks. All I pull away is broken barrels and broken chairs. So you can take those home. Um, I love so, it. I think it's a good idea. At least try. Do you have some kind of uh, system to determine whether it's a success or a failure at the end of the year? It would you just, it would, um, I don't have any sort of metrics in place, but would be, we'd keep a record of complaints. We'd mm -hmm. keep a record of how much staff time people have to go out to pick up debris. Mm -hmm. I need Roger um, here. What's that? I need Roger here. <laughs> yes. Roger will be all yeah, around here. Plus, yeah. plus minus. Uh, I, yeah. um, but that's what we'd have to build, Rick, is some sort of, for our staff when they go, or when Steve, uh, Rec Waterfront person, when he makes his loop to meet the staff and do change, there would be a check-in period, just like a daily, like check the streets. Um, their association is really strong in the sense of beach cleanups and walks. So if there's something wrong, we're gonna know probably before I land in town, mm. if something's not not right down there. So um, it's I think the challenge for me is gonna be more about my park staff being ready to hop on a dime if something comes up. So. That'll be the difference, I think, more of a struggle on my part than on, um, you know, the, uh, the trash mm -hmm. points. So. What did the Higgins Beast Association think about it? Uh, they're in support of trying. Yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Do you have money for signage? Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that. Yeah, so my plan would be the money we, would, we wouldn't, I've allocated in this budget the, the appropriate amount of money to remove the trash, and I would propose using those fees to do signage and education and increase that piece. So, so if you decide that it's you put up all the new signs and you pilot it and it's a total disaster, yep. you know, then the money that was spent on all of that new stuff is now irrelevant or could possibly no, be used. I mean, when else? I say new signs, I would probably go with the A frames that you can put, you know, uh, replaceable okay. signs in them versus metal ones because there is already too many signs that are beaches. And so we that's a that's on my short list of sign mm -hmm. evaluation because people don't. So I know Higgins has had great success with the A-frames. They put them out in the morning, they pick them up in the afternoon. So it's, it's different and you can get those uh, vinyl cutouts for cheap and change the message or color scheme. So <clears throat> that's what I propose along with education. With, thanks, Jim. See ya. Um, educational material when we hand out beat stickers and that sort of stuff to let people know that those that change would be happening. So another volunteer thing when I got participated in the Audubon cleanup of the marsh, yeah. but it might be kind of interesting when you're working with like school groups, you know, when they do beach cleanups, yeah. the schools used to do them, the middle schools and Cape used to do yeah. them, and it makes people more aware of all the trash that's on the beach. Yep. Yeah, and awesome. a little bit more yeah. respectful. Yeah. So it might be sort of a nice volunteer opportunity. Yeah. Um to make people more aware of to bring the trash out. Yeah. And the more signage, the better. Cause like when you go with kids, nobody has, I don't have plastic bags anymore. Right. So I want to go prepared if I'm going with my family to take my trash without sticking it in the middle of my beach towel. Do right. you know what I mean? Yeah. And I did speak to one person who deals with a lot of rentals down there. So they'd be willing to add stuff to the rental agreements so let people know like, hey, it's Karen and carry out. Yeah. We're providing bags in the closet, grab them, that sort of stuff. So yeah, we try to try to market as much, but most of the users down there are coming from the homes. I, you know, is what I'm getting from the association is probably the most foot traffic from there. So. so if you have people that are bringing stuff back to their home that's mm -hmm. not being tossed out in trash and if they have like umbrellas and chairs and all that other nonsense and they're leaving it in all of these rental places, is there going to be space or opportunity for those homeowners then to dispose of it? Uh, I would have to check. I, great question. I don't know. I mean, there's normal trash pickup and then mm -hmm. like they can take things to the transfer station mm -hmm. and recycle. So 
the rental people have a very good, and I can ask, that was a question that was brought up here, like how would we handle that so it doesn't end up on the side of the road versus, and I think that's where my parks crew is gonna have to make sure that. Like having like a, a locked resident only dumpster or something that could be put in that space so that if that does happen, yes, yeah. they're carried out and the beaches are taken care of, but now they don't have. There are dumpsters that are available in, in town. No, in, like the dumpsters by Holy Donut. Oh, at the to, shop, yeah, that's yeah. how public works. Yeah, I don't think we need to put. And, and the challenge with Higgins Beach is we don't even, didn't even put a dumpster. So when, right now, presently, when they take that trash away, my contractor takes it to the dumpster that I have at Ferry Beach because there's not a, there wasn't a space for a dumpster and in the lot, they're right near the residential homes mm -hmm. and they come there like five in the morning to pick up that dumpster and they shake it. Mm -hmm. So we chose not to um, put a dumpster in that lot for that reason, even, even, the, <laughs> even the kind of toter cans that they pick up just because of the noise and the residential challenges. So. Um, have you talked with um, people for the market or for the inn? So I know the inn, especially, they're starting to do that, like, hey, we'll deliver to you at the beach yeah. um, type thing. So having either signage or some information that is either on their websites or at their registers, depending on how you order, might be a good idea, because that's some of the trash that probably ends up there. Yeah, that's a great idea. We'll add that to our communication list. I'd be inclined to do it across the board as a pilot program. Agreed. No. But if if you're more comfortable just doing it with a test yep. area, I, I'm okay with that. Maybe at the end of the year we report, figure it out, so we can say, hey, this is really good. Yep. Start promoting it newsletter for the next summer to say across the board. Or we could call it instead of a test, how about a phase one? Let's not say it's a that, test, let's say this is phase one. We could say phase one failed. Yep. But I mean, test is like I mean, let's say this is what's happening. We're yeah. going to do Higgins first. My only, and this is just my two, so my only thought with a pilot was just, it, it kind of calms people down yeah. To, yeah. to say, let me give this a, ch a chance versus phase one and get people kind of, I don't know, it's just my soft. And you're only getting complaints from one beach instead of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, and, and part of it is, and I'll bring it up when we talk about mm -hmm. budget, but you know, if that's a recommendation we want to do, one of the things that I sent you guys was looking at the beach fees that's all part of the master planning and where we go and why we're raising fees. And if now if we're not spending $60,000 on picking up trash, where can we reinvest that money we've already allocated? So I think it'd be a lot of positives for some better initiatives than, than would a letter of recommendation that this happened from this board help you at all? Or I mean, anything from an advisory board makes, I mean, I'm comfortable making the recommendation because I think it's, it makes total sense. If this board wanted to make a recommendation, obviously I'd be happy to have that. But I mean, I'm okay either way because I think it's that important. But well, and I so I give liaison updates, so I could add my next liaison update. I could also ask for feedback and say mm -hmm. this is what the board's discussing and see how town council feels about it. Make an announcement that this is the thing that you're going to be doing, yep. and that kind of puts the word out there. And then I can see how people feel about it. I don't think you should do all the features at once. I think that's probably so, well, I, hold on a sec. I, I agree with you with that. However, like all the beaches serve different populations of people. So are you piloting tourists that come in that use Higgins Beach and the rentals? Or are you piloting like the families that use ferry or the people like me who don't want to be near the kids and go to Pine Point because we can spread out? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, again, this is this was trying to deal with a direct Higgins was the biggest challenge last year regarding trash and debris. Okay. Um, so that's why the, we chose them first. We haven't had a real issue at Pine Point. Like I said, they got eight barrels right by the building. They scoop mm -hmm. up. I've got an attendant that's actually looking at it. The chat and the same thing at Ferry. We've only got six barrels and we have an attendant can see every single one of them. At Higgins, they're in different roads and they're in different places. And so it's out of sight, out of mind. So this one, I think, will make the biggest impact to a lot of the complaints we get because we don't have eyes on it on a regular basis. So um, if I could, Karen, my only concern about, and you can more than happy to vet with council, uh, it's, my thing is if we have to either say we're doing this or not. Um, so when would you be able to vet that or kind of- I just mean like in the future, is this something that people would entertain? I think it's obviously great. I mean, yeah. we're trying to be conservative and conserve more here. Yeah. And we don't, so it wouldn't be a liaison update till next month. Okay. And I would just mention it. Okay. Does the town come to me too? No, not at all. It's more about getting the word out there so people know it's happening. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. 
Yeah, or like so just a communication, not necessarily just communication. feedback. Not and then necessarily say, feedback. And then, is yep, that, that's an operational, is an operational right. decision that right. I don't yep. think people right. need to necessarily meddle in too much. Well, my fear would be is that if it had to go to some sort of public comment or feedback, then we're never doing it this summer. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I just, yeah. We need to get it ready for May 1st for a ticket sale. So that would just be mine. So can you present it and then we say that the Community Services Advisory Board discussed it and we're in full support of your recommendation? Okay, so I would like to propose that we um, go to carry and carry out as a test pilot for Higgins Beach only this summer uh, with the opportunity of future expansion moving forward if, it, if, it, if it's a positive piece. And so I would love a motion and a, and a vote by this board just in support of trying this. So moved. Second. As, as stated. As stated. <laughs> Any other questions? Any questions, comments? Are you, will you have a list of like the ways of how you're going to communicate that out to like residents and other people that you're sharing that information? Yes, that's, that's our next piece of how, how we get it out there. And, and again, just our, our common threads are Facebook newsletter, council liaison, reaching out to the associations. I did mention the renter group that I spoke with. The number one group is we meet with the dogs group, because that's, that's probably, if we're going to have any pinch points, it's going to be dog waste, because one of the proposals I made was, you know, they have those little cans you put on a thing, but I still got to send somebody to get it, and that's going to be full. So it's, you know, I think maybe something at a town hall where they sell passes. I was just yeah. going to say that. No, yeah. definitely, we'll yeah. make a little card that goes with a pass when they get their sticker for the year. It'll yeah. it'll be a cheat sheet with it to say. And some kind of signage on yes. the site. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Any others? All in favor of say of the motion presented. Any opposed? Abstain. Thank you. Um, and then the only other thing is um, um, we're studying right now. We are going to raise the child care fee for next fall. Um, my plan wasn't to, but we've had to raise when we looked at it during the budget process in the last couple of weeks. So I'm going to try to offset um, the cost of what we've had to do for part-time increases. And so just try to make that up this budget cycle. So if I had to wager a guess right now looking at some of my stuff, we'd probably go up with like $20 a month. Which would be like a five dollars a week, um, which turns out to be, you know, like um, seems like sixty cents more a day to try to keep up with the staff. Did so you say for starting for fall of this year? It would be fall for twenty. So that's preschool. the preschool aftercare. What else? Before and aftercare in preschool. Okay. Uh, sorry, not preschool. Preschool that fee is already set for this year, and we kept it the same because it was the second year. I try not to raise fees every year, so preschool is. The second year with the, with the full staff um so it would be before care after care and then if somebody was doing both so the fees would get adjusted across the board uh, so just as an fyi um and then budget so yeah. um in your in your packet um totally high level um what i've given you and, and i can answer questions and i'd be happy to meet with people individually um based on so in your budget, you should have a sheet that looks like this. Um, and so this is the way that I, I, I do my budget in my head. Um, Excel spreadsheet, and then we go through our, our common piece. So mm -hmm. I break my budget up into six divisions. Um, so administrative division, which includes um, our operational staff. That's where I am. My operational manager, Nicole. Uh, cable is in there, passport is in there, all those functions live under administration. Um, recreation is, all, is, is uh, you know, adult programming and all the youth sports um, uh, live under recreation. And, and then those summer camps, uh, not, not our traditional eight week summer camp, but like the week long camps, all the sports camps, art camp, theater camp, all those live under recreation. Um, under intergenerational division, that's where uh, we house summer camp, senior programming, uh, and all the childcare services live under um, the intergenerational budget. Uh, the hub, that is just the operation of this building, lease, insurance, um, and then part-time staff. Uh, the parks and grounds division, um, that division is, um, is pretty much everything that we do town-wide in all the parks, um, as well as all the resources and support we do for the school live under that parks and ground. Um, 
as well as some contract, I shouldn't say contract <coughs> service, excuse me, part-time staff that do like cleaning of parks bathrooms. Um, goes under there. Um, under the beach budget, uh, that is summer operations for the beaches, as well as that's in that budget we pay for the beach breaking and cleaning, um, as well as um, contracted services for trash and bathrooms. All live under the beach budget. Um, just so you know, the facilities budget I put together and supervise, but that lives under the the town hall side of things. So that's a whole nother um, another division. But that is that budget's built. That's town hall, public safety building, uh, Alger Hall, Garwin Building, um, and uh, Washington App Storage. We just added to that budget this year. So. That is um, where everything lives in that budget. So those are um, full, full budgets for the year. Um, none of these numbers are vetted. These are what I proposed to the town manager. We haven't sat down or none of them are approved, but this is the first pass at it. Um, and then you can see next to them are the revenues that each of those divisions um, bring in. Uh, somebody specifically asked about revenues. So on the back, just for your reference, on the back side of the sheet is where the revenues come from. And just so you know, this is color coded. So administration is blue. So everything in the blue is administration, orange is rec. Just so it's broken out that way for you guys to see. Um, so for example, under childcare, which is yellow intergenerational, we expend over a million dollars in that division. Um, but we bring in a projected $1.4 million over the course of the year. Just I'll take a, a pause. It. Does everybody see how those two things go together? Mm -hmm. um, this is the revenue. Yes, yeah, the back. Yep, yeah, that's revenue on that side. I, I should have labeled that. I apologize. Um, but anything in a parentheses is a revenue. Um, so those are all created to where you can see that same number is on the front sheet. So when you look at here, revenues for child care, it says 1.43 on this sheet. This sheet just breaks it down into detail for you where it comes from. So you can see in yellow that 1.4 million, 930 come from child care, 420 from summer camps, preschool program is 70 and then it breaks down all the way out that way. So the hub administration and parks and grounds don't make any revenue. Uh, parks and ground makes very little. Parks and grounds makes fifty-four thousand dollars in revenue anticipated. The hub revenue we changed two years ago. So any program that's here, uh, we were having a hard time logging what was where because sometimes it was getting moved around. So all the programs uh, last year got put into the appropriate budget. So like the Plover program was run out of here, but all the expense and revenue is in the engine generational budget because that's where child care is. Um, if there's senior programs that are run here and revenue, that's all in the senior part of the budget just to keep it clean. Sorry, I was looking at the other side. Maybe, oh, I, have, maybe I have it backwards on this one. What's if that? you have the expenses and the revenue, so the, for like administration, there would be... Uh, so administration costs us to the... To, if you were looking by division, the administration budget costs us $192,000. Right, because so this is there's no profit in that category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It doesn't okay. make enough to cover. Yes. Right. So yeah. recreation, intergenerational, and beaches are the only categories that provide a profit. They provide a profit. Okay. Yes. Well, um, and I didn't pull a slide. I have one in my budget presentation mm -hmm. when I do it every year. But it takes, and this is what I've kind of explained to council over the last couple of years. I take the parks division, and when you pull that away, you can see as a whole when you go down to the bottom here including all those, we're 77% self-funded with this new proposed budget. So we all, we asked the taxpayer for $781,000. So we're producing, you know, 77% self-funded as a as an organization <clears throat> across the board. But I qualify that because Parks and Grounds is a town function and we've had this debate about yes. whether it sits with you or not yeah. so when you pull out specifically community services which is not 
Right. If administration we... in the parks and grounds is about nine hundred fifty-four thousand right. dollars, but parks and grounds is pretty much town. Arguably, could be under the town budget. Right. So that increases the percentage of community service funding that you are self-funding. If you pull out parks, which is mostly community good, right? right. Those are philosophical That's decisions. Right. Whether we do for the school, we do for a park, we do for anybody. You know, we could be clearing, helping public works clearing the debris off a beach. All the other divisions, when you put them together. Our, this year will be a little different until we raise fees uh, or we look at numbers, but it's usually 100% self-funded. Okay, so if I leave administration in there, everything else is self-funding, so that's only 5% of your budget is going to the taxpayers, arguably. Yes. Yeah, I mean, as a whole, for decades, this has been the model of what community, it's just never been looked at. And so I, when I go to budget committee and then I, or the finance committee and then do the budget process, my thing is that, I always try to explain that where we need to make philosophical choices is around parks, because that doesn't make, that's your direct impact to your taxpayer. If you want to mow three times a week versus two, it's going to cost you this. You know what I mean? If you only have this amount of money, then we got to figure out what we do on the, everything else. It's around programs, right? So when you, if we don't, if we don't have people in a program, we don't run the program. You still got to mow, you still got to do trash, you still have to do. Have you thought about when you present this to the, you may already do this, I don't yeah. know. When you present it to town council to actually break it apart so that your percentage of self-funding looks like 95% yeah, of community and, services. And what I do is I take parks and I take parks and move it down to number seven Fine. And, and put the percentage. So there'd be another row of percentage in here where parks would be standalone. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you would see that as a whole, because what what's hard for a lot of people to understand is that is that when you look at most municipal budgets, you are you know you're saying here is the police budget. They have authority to spend right down to it because they're not there's not a lot of offsetting revenue. Right. For us, there's a lot of projections. Right. Like I'm saying, you know, I, I've had if you look at this number here on the back side, I've had for. Two years, three years, nine hundred and thirty thousand dollars is a revenue projection for childcare. We hit that before COVID, yeah, and we're we should hit it again this year. You know what I mean? But I don't know how many kids are coming back. Well, this year we're we're over three hundred kids at summer camp. Childcare is back to full capacity, so we'll start hitting our benchmarks again. But when you look at previous budgets. I didn't hire as many staff. So I didn't spend the full budget because I don't need to. If I only get 200 kids, I only need to hire 20 counselors. If I have 300, it's gotta be 30. And so those cost expenses shift back and forth. So that's kind of a different concept um, than a regular town budget. This is not a big revenue projection against. Well, in the hub, arguably, is the spot where you do your inter intergenerational programming. Right. And if you net out the 388 and the 356, you're still generating a profit. Right. And, and even take seniors one more further is that we don't, it's not a cost recovery center. That's been a philosophical decision where, you know, we spend about $150,000 a year and maybe make, you know, and that seniors all together, $35,000, $40,000, because we're just trying to cover a direct meal cost because that's a contracted service. But we don't cover uh, full time staff costs back. We don't, a lot of those things are just choices that other divisions subsidize. The extra money in childcare subsidizes that that program. Well, so. the hub that's a three year lease, right? So that's that's happening. That yep. that line, right? Yep. And you're and this is going on to year three or two. Uh, September of twenty five yeah. is when it expires. September thirtieth, twenty five. And so before you had that expense, it, are you paying for the hub? It's I mean, my sweeping assumption is you you have the capacity now to run a lot more programs. Yeah, so. or we wouldn't do certain programs. Like we wouldn't have senior programs because we couldn't get back into. Right. We wouldn't be doing a flubber program. We wouldn't. The seniors wouldn't happen during during COVID and now, um, and then all a lot of the extra programs that we're running, new specialty stuff, all happens out of here. Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, um, there is new programming happening. I have, one, I have one very technical question yeah. on the last line on the second page. You have CS each parking lot with our rev. CS. The last line. That four hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. What is CS Beach parking lot rev? So that's our community. We, that's the beach parking lot. So that's senior. That's season passes and day passes from the beaches. So and I, that's a designated assigned fund that can only be used on the beaches. Is that correct? Profit from it. 
we, we okay. yeah, we went over this in finance actually yeah. a yeah. lot. <laughs> Right. about the designated funds from beach fees yeah. um, and how they're like some sit with certain places the co-op keeps theirs and the, and the herd park keeps theirs and they can only use it on certain things right so if I, we want like there's anything above the revenue projection goes to the reserve accounts so any beach fees collected is goes to a designated fund right that can only be used for certain things. And I think that's why I was just trying to clarify if that's that designated fund, if that's a beach fee fund or not. Well, is it's, that all three beaches? That's all three that's beaches. So plan. what, if if we make more, the way I understood it is if we make more than, because it covers the operation of it, <laughs> if we make more than that number or anything above or under spend, that goes to the reserve account. So if I budget 300 and we only spend 250, Oh. And we, we covered, I think that's the way I was explained to me, the difference goes to the reserve account. We subsidize the budget and then over revenue or under expenditure, mm -hmm. if you if you make your revenue projections. But it we also should, works- to clarify that. Okay. Because that's yep. there's a lot of confusion right now. Yep. Because that's where, when we were talking about the Herd Park project a couple of years ago, that's why I wanted to raise beach fees because I'm like, if we can, based on the amount of season passes we sell and day mm -hmm. passes, we could raise another $100,000 and that would pay for the bond to do her park and make it a self and make it like an enterprise account. Um, so yeah, we can clarify that for sure. Um, Is there a limit on how many uh, resident passes are sold? No, there's not. A, right now we don't, and we don't have a, re, um, a limit on how many non-resident passes are sold either. Some places said it. you, in my notes on the chart that I sent you guys, some places set a cap on non-resident. Mm -hmm. And, and some don't, depending on their model. Like that. Thank you. Do we yeah. know how many of, of each are sold each year? Uh, I could get you those. Yeah, we keep track of, of okay. what that is. So we could get those numbers. When you guys decide to dive into it, I'll I'll have a staff person pull past data to say, okay, we've sold so many feet fast. Every day when we do a deposit, they dump, they do the deposit and then they put the data into a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So then we can say which days, which the beach was closed, how many day passes, um, and then revenue projections come from that. And so that we'll have that tool when you guys decide to look at, hey, I'm gonna recommend $25 a day versus whatever it is when we get to that point um, through the process. So um, so that is just, again, this is, so this is my personal sheet, how I keep track of it. So it's how my brain works. Um, we haven't put together our FY24 budget presentation yet because Tom's still going through numbers and making cuts and moving things a certain year. And so I haven't seen that final recommendation yet. So expense for before and after care. Yep. Beyond labor, staffing. Yep. Cost, we're being charged. We pay a rental fee and rental. use fee yeah, for the school um, to use the facilities. It's a pro rate, it's not like a full blown. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's usually between 30 and $50,000 a year. Is that normal? What do you? Yeah. As far as what do you mean normal? Like town. Town to use Everybody's yes. different. Yeah. Every mm -hmm. yeah. Everybody's different. You know, they don't charge us for summer camp, but they charge us for the school year. And where we don't, we don't charge for lining fields. It depends on the partnership. Like if yeah. you have a good, <clears throat> a good partner. Like um, I work in Westbrook, and so we have a partnership with the school. So if we didn't have that partnership, they would be charging us to use the space in the facility. But because we have that partnership, they don't charge us. It depends. Everybody's got a different yeah. model. Some yeah. some places have uh, MOUs. Some places say like, okay, I'll give you a certain amount of money or staff rates. So, and I have a, um, I'll tell you about a, one of the initiatives that I have go, going for this year with the school. So hopefully we'll receive something back. Um, but it's, yeah, so everything's different. And the way it's set up here is that, um, we charge, we get charged to use buses and pay for the bus drivers, which is pretty difficult. Um, and then we get a, a bill at the end of the school year for um, lease space of using the schools for childcare. We don't get charged for summer camp use. So, what about for sports? Uh, they're all our facilities, but they don't charge us for gym use during That's the school. Yeah, no. I'm gonna ask, like, they, I was thinking like no. the indoor soccer no. that's going on now. No, they don't charge us okay. for that. The only thing they would charge us during the school year for gym use if we they had to bring some sort of custodian in or something at overtime or something different. Like when we have a special event, sometimes on a weekend they'll charge us if they they're, if they're saying we need a custodian in there, we'll pay for custodian. 
which is great because I don't have custodians. And so, you know, it's got to get cleaned up and it's nice for my staff not to have to stay two or three hours and mop floors. So that's a, that's a, in my mind, a win-win, but that doesn't always happen. Sometimes like, oh, I've got people in the building, you're good. So hypothetically, we're all one big happy town and we're not charged for facilities in, for daycare after care. What percentage of that is that of our expense? Um, I mean, I, if I go to my... We charge the school $50,000 or something? Well, that's... No, I mean, let's just I say it. I mean, that's... I know. That's I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. Like I can eloquently say this in my finance meeting. Like, what? Well, that's what I... <laughs> so I'm not looking to charge them. I'm looking at them not to be charging us. Yeah, well, let's it, remind them equitable. of what we do for them, maybe. Yeah, a exactly. Bit. I mean, yeah. I mean it's, a, it's a it's a big conversation. It's there's a tough a, relationship. Because there's a lot of... There's a lot of... It, it, it's... There's something that if, if it's a conversation that somebody wants to have, it's bigger because every department does a little something different for the school or the school does, right. you know what I mean? So it's it's just not one department that has a relationship with, you know, when public works does something, is it charged? What, you know, again, somebody said it because we're a minimal receiver for the school, it's, it's still the same. If it's a tax dollar, which side of it is, it's more about my my thing has always been. I don't want to, because if I have to spend X amount of money doing something for the school programs, I want to make sure I'm serving the rest of the community in the same way. And when I can't, then that's, that's when time to have a conversation. So if like we're putting initiatives forward and they're not going, well, then that's when I say, well, I can, I can create more revenue for you, you know, because I, I don't, I, you know, here's an opportunity, but those are philosophical conversations. And, um, but to answer your question, Art, the, it costs about six hundred thousand dollars a year to operate childcare. Now, when I say that, all the full-time staff is on that side of the budget. You know, yeah. manager and the two programmers. So that's, um, but yeah, there's a, a lease payment there of thirty thousand dollars a year budgeted every year for use. Um, so maybe we should carry the cost over to this, to the uh, residents more. I mean, well, and that. And that's why I always say when we talk about raising fees, like what's the purpose of raising fee and what are we offsetting? I said this council numerous times, I'm not raising childcare fees to offset parks. If it's, you know, because that's a community good, you know what I mean? It's, it's a, uh, it, the fee should cover the program. And if there's a, if there's something else along the way, but not something so far that affecting another group. Might be bold to say you're, ra you're raising your fees to pay the school $30,000 a year to use their facilities, right? That doesn't come across great, does it? <laughs> you don't have to respond, Todd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm proposing fees because of our staff increases. We've had, that, yeah. we've had that fee for 10 years in the budget. I mean, it's, it's it since literally when we're takes old. it from this part no, it's, to the other part. This is yes. what the relationship literally. with the school is. It's yeah. which I know. think the whole one town concept to what Westbrook and Cape did yeah. the same thing is then you get so you're not so the whole school budget project would be less. Is this in West Hartford? They, they just flat out there's no charge. charge. So why can't we propose that? Why can't I propose that? Well, it is. There's a lot of ramifications for like a one town concept. You have to work through a couple yeah. of different layers. You can yes. probably speak to that. Yeah, like I don't just walk in and I'm like, hey, right. I know oh, yeah. all these things. Like, right. you know, we, you know, like we provide services to their kids and we have that relationship right. to, you know, where we can do that. But I'm also like, their programs and stuff take priority first, so I do have to work around their schedule. That's already how it you is know, here. Yeah. And we exactly. have a good working relationship with staff. The things that I think, we, if we're ever going to get to a point, it's more about philosophically and, and operationally, which is a high level conversation. Correct. Because staff, when I call over there and I need something, they're super helpful and super yeah. responsive. It's more about, you know, one side of the ledger or another. That's a different conversation and who's who's what where. Um, so. Um, I that used to wind me up pretty good, but it doesn't anymore. I, I I've had to come back and say, as long as I can provide what people are asking for, twenty two thousand people, then because then that's a different conversation. So we'll. Uh, well, not that I wouldn't like to save thirty thousand dollars. Well, here's the thing: you would save it in me in community services, but the school would have to go find thirty more in revenue, which would be more in taxes. So that's the whole one. We have a surplus every year, is what I've learned. Is it about $30,000? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
I'm on the finest plea. I mean, you get this is great. Yeah. Like, how much is it? Thirty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so is all of that circles. That's to be way over my pay grade. Exactly. Exactly. That end of it. But it's good information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so that's kind of how the budget works as a whole. And again, how we put it out there, how we make the decisions. Um, the new initiatives for the budget this year, and it's not in this number, but I have proposed just under one hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars in the budget. Uh, for two more parks workers. Um, and again, that was raised in the master plan as being very short staffed on that side of things. I have met with the school. They are bringing the matching revenue across. So they'll show it as an expense and we'll show it as an expense and a revenue. So it, that's, that's the way we're gonna present that this year. And that's kind of what they do with the IT model. So we put it as an expense, they put it as a, an expense and then we get a revenue back in just like we do as a program. So. That has been proposed this year, um, and they've accepted to bring that forward. So if that were to come to fruition, we would be advertising for two more parks workers to supplement the crew. Um, and it does two things. It, um, it brings more people power and hours into the position so we can spend more time um, sharing that load across the board. But some days, we don't have enough staff to get certain things done even for the school. So we'll ensure that they have a good quality product all the time as well. So that's a win for both sides. Um, I did put in the um, beach budget this year, a part, I think it was like $25,000 for a part-time seasonal park ranger. So we'll see how that works out. Um, I will say the same thing I've said a couple of times, depending on when this all gets approved, whether it happens this year or next year, because we want to make sure we put a good product out there, uh, especially when you're trying to hire. It's a tough time to hire. So um, we'll have to strategize a little about that if it makes it through the process. Um, another initiative that I put in the budget this year was um, I've added uh, $75,000 to the parks budget um, under contracted services. Sharon, uh, you'll see that line has been proposed to go from $5,000 to $80,000. Um, that is for design and development money. So after our conversation last time and analysis, you know, suggestion based on, you know, his professional work, um, we're not in a place to be able to do a um, landscape art, somebody full time, but this gives us money to be able to, when we decide on priorities or projects, this will give us a funding source to say, okay, let's work on the land topo, doing a design, doing, doing all the pieces to be able to bring a project to council to say, here's to take it from the beginning to the end. Um, I do have a matching offset revenue that I proposed. Mm -hmm. Use the uh, rec impact fees from the planning side of the budget to offset that so it wouldn't be a direct impact to the taxpayer. Um, and when you use funds from those type of accounts, it would only be a direct. So if we spent 40, we'd re refund ourselves 40 from that side of the books. So, um, but it gives us a place. I vetted that number through the town engineer as well as CHA, who did a lot of the designs in the master plan. You know, you're talking, you know, to get one project off the ground anywhere from forty-five to seventy-five thousand dollars in surveys and the deeds and just kind of uh, drainage plans and all those type of things to make something successful. It's it's a lot more expensive than I had ever imagined. So that's a new initiative in the budget. Did you? I'm sorry. Did you say the category? Uh, of, parks. For it's parks. in the parks okay. contract service line. Seventy thousand or seventy-five. 75. Yep. Okay. Went from five to eighty. So. That'll be a, a discussion. Um, and again, if it makes it through Tom Brown, then it'll be a part of the presentation to finance and council uh, to get feedback. Um, uh, so yeah, it was the uh, <coughs> Parks Ranger, the design development. Um, there was a couple other um, budgetary things in there, just uh, in the, in more for Karen's as the finance person. Um, you'll I put a new, program development line of $10,000 in the budget. And on the revenue side, I put an offsetting $10,000 because we've built so many new programs and we don't always know a year away where they're gonna come from. I put in a, a, a starting money of $10,000 and typically when we've made a, developed a program, 99% of the time we profit. If we don't profit in one, it may be in another one. So if my staff comes to me and says, hey, I want to do this new team program. I'm going to say charge the expenses off to that line. The revenue will go to the new programming line. And then when we come back to this point next year, those new monies will just go to the right division. So that, that team program money will go to 
intergenerational. If Cindy does a new senior program, that'll go to seniors. So it lets me not put a bunch of money in different places that I don't need. We can focus on a starting money, but it has a direct revenue offset again. So theoretically it won't be any net impact, but just trying to look at this budget operationally um, as we have the building and we can be more creative programming. How do we do that without saying, I know I didn't budget $3,000 for a new program because I didn't know I wanted to do it. This gives us seed money to start new programming. Um, and you could probably pull that out of the parks and facilities plan. Just, I mean, I'm sure at some point in there, they, they said you need to have money aside right. for, so I mean, right. just to like reference why, oh, absolutely. You know, like to yep. it up. Yep. That's why I support it. Yeah, the and, and, and again, those are the type of things where in the master plan you'll see in one of the, um, in one of my parks line this year, try, and again, it'll be a debate during the finance. And I think Karen can chime in, but we, we had a conversation, um, whether something's a CIP or is it going the budget, you know? And so, in the parks budget this year, I put money um, in the uh, in, in a different line. It's fifteen thousand dollars to start seal coating parking lots. Our parking lots and cracks haven't been done in years, so rather than trying to get money every project, I I've got a ton of parking lots, and I can do one every. I think I've got nine parking lots. I can seal coat one a year, crack seal, seal coat it, stripe it, and keep rotating. Um, but doing it out of my operational budget, not as a CIP. Because then if it's if we generate revenue to offset it, great. But it's the debate whether you guys have this conversation all the time. Is it a capital project? Is it a general maintenance project? Um, and you I maintain think, what's that? Your budget maintains the park, the, the parking lot. We do everything. Park like public works doesn't do no that does the main roads. Public works, but if I, I need to have my parking lot striped or seal coated or that comes out of my budget. Just like irrigation or trash or I mean I'm new to finance. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I yeah. apologize for the faces. I'm like, yeah, no, everything, everything. That's the everything. whole one town concept. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the mounds of the park. Yeah, anything in the so parks the or park. beaches. I mean, I even pay for public works to clean the beaches out of the beach revenue. So everything because because wow, we make revenue. Like <laughs> everything, you know, when I first got here, they wanted me to be hundred percent self service they were fine. You pick and shoot. You could yeah. be. Yeah. Well, that, if yes. you did. And, that's, yeah. and that's why we pulled out the parks. That was the quickest way to prove that we are. But the choices we make is, is the park side of things. So. Did you put in your budget? We talked about a grant writer potentially. I did not put it in because we've got like three new positions, but I'm going to put it as a highlighted piece because I personally, over the course, there'll be one, there'll be one or two positions that we don't fill right off the get go. And so I wanted, I want to run through this, the master plan piece, because it talks about grant writing. It talks about engagement. It talk, Alex and I had a meeting before this to talk about, he does a lot of friends group with Portland. And so could that person operate that whole engagement piece? I think I can do that internally, um, but I didn't propose it as a standalone position because I need to, we need, well, me, we, I need to sit down and figure out what's that going to cost a year and how many hours and what's that? I don't have a job description. I don't have a, I don't have a piece, but I think it's something that we can bring on board uh, as a contracted service versus a staff. Right. And so that's where I have flexibility as a contracted service. I can do that amongst, um, uh, amongst the operational budget. Um, we do have a new finance director. So I wonder if that's a good conversation for him about how towns keep their finances and paying departments and intertwining and paying yeah. back and forth. I mean, I just... Yeah, I had an initial sit down with him and I was telling him all the things we do and um, I just stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> because, again, coming in from Tulsa with, and, you know, and then dealing with the audit and everything else going on, um, I think we're going to see a lot of potential changes as far as just some, yeah. some conversations as far as things goes. And again, our budget is unique because we create revenue. Public Works doesn't create an offsetting. So I know in the past they've tried to say, okay, if this generates this and that generates that, you know, in the fee, where it should live, I think that's like, should it be in the highway to budget and I reimburse them? Like, you know, because I have to call and say, hey, you know, can we do this project? We'll, you know, make sure things are on their scope. So there may be some other efficiencies, but because we, we, we bring in a revenue, they've always put everything. Mechanics, 
paving, everything in our budget, rentals. So we we pay for everything. Even some places like, you know, every department in Scarborough pays for their own insurances and that's what is all part of other towns lives in one oh, yeah. budget somewhere else because that's a whole nother <laughs> you can't control like I know when my previous job I went I had my full timers. I only have four full timers and I went from one full benefit package to four benefit packages in one year because I hired new staff and they they wanted family plans versus a single. And so that went up $70,000 out of a million dollar budget and everybody went bonkers, but we were just lucky. We didn't have family plans for seven, eight years because you, you had single plans. And so um, they changed it after that and put all the benefits in one because it, you got a bigger pot. It doesn't hit as hard because like you change jobs and your family plan gone down to a single and you start, you bring a family, well, that's a wash. You only have three or four employees. You only have two family plans in a budget. That's huge. That's you know another sixteen to eighteen thousand dollars. So, um, so again, how that thing lives in the budget. Um, the other document that I gave you, and I think it stands alone, and this will kind of be a growing document. Um, this is our five-year CIP plan, um, and so uh, this, as I explained to Town Manager Hall. Again, will the, all these projects live in the budget this year? No idea. Um, we got to go through the process. But I've also explained that really from year 25, the next four years, this is going to be pretty fluid based on what we decide, what we're doing when we do it, and how we do it. Um, so you can see um, in year 24, I'll just go through those very quick. And again, whether they all land or not. But I put in funds to. Um, start replacing and repairing concession stand buildings at the parks, roof, trims, doors with rotting. So uh, start working on those one a year. Uh, Can you in, define the criteria? Um, oh, so I, I, I didn't give you that. So this is not a town thing. This is a me thing <laughs> on the backside. So when I do this, like, so that Springbrook, I put 3.2. And I, I, did you get yeah. it on the backside? Yeah. So I'm sorry. On the backside, 3.2 is... Um, asset protection and projecting. So I keep track of, so when people say, this is a have to, this thing's falling apart, or um, for example, like, um, do I have a number seven on here? So like under community garden, um, it says 7.3. So in my scale of things, that's, a, so that's an enhancement of service, make a bigger community garden than we have. And the three means request. So that's the criteria. So it's either must do, projected request or future down the road. So when I build out my CIP plan, um, and I didn't put the funding category in there because usually when I build out my CIP, um, and this may be something we get to as council, I have appropriated, bonded, because like on the um, grant or funding from several sources, because like my proposal on the community garden is not for the town to fund it, but for let us either fundraise or go after grants. And so, I'll, once I know what's where, I'll go through, and that's how I keep track of my CIP, so I can say, you know, it's not a hill I'm going to die on. This is an enhancement of service, and it's a request. If you want to do it, fantastic. But I'm telling you, on Mitchell Tennis Courts, that 1.1, that is a safety issue, and that's a must-do in my, so I should have made you a copy of that on the backside, but that's how I rank things, so when I decide which hill I'm going to die on. So is this stuff that you committee. pulled out of the parks and facilities plan? So some of these have been things I've been carrying for years. Um, and then some of these are uh, like, for example, the ADA compliance. Um, I put $50,000. So that is directly out of the park. I haven't identified which projects are there, but we know that they've, they've said there's probably about $400,000 of ADA projects that need to get done. So until I, I I wanted to put some seed money, and that's why I just put it a little over time. Yeah, I'm trying to. So we're supposed to be looking at the parks and facility plan and giving yeah. feedback. Yeah. And what I'm looking at here is what appears to be your your idea of what we should do moving forward, right? And so. So yes, for this. So like I said, I'm saying this is what we should do this year because you're not yeah. going to get me your comments by the time I had to turn this in. I've said to Tom, this right here. Right. This is just placeholders because once we start our work, this is all going to change from here over. But this part is either things this year, some of it's from the master plan that I pulled out, uh, and some of it is 
like your recommendation last year to put money in for a land purchase for a community center. That's your recommendation from last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the um, Springbrook, the top one was that was in there last year and just could move forward. The water fountain was in there last year, didn't move forward. The tennis courts was actually supposed to be $600,000, but because that's a potential site and school issues, we're just doing repairs and not doing a rebuild. Um, skate park is a have to. Um, so I, what I'm trying to clarify for the board right now, and yep. maybe Art can help me, is where you guys are coming into this process and where the residents are advising Todd and town council to say, okay, let's make parks ADA compliance the first priority. And I don't want to dive ahead, but we're saying, what's the criteria? What are we looking at? Is safety our thing or is it resident feedback? You know, maybe no one cares that this doesn't have an ADA parking lot, but everyone is, is screaming about a different park. I'm literally trying to figure out how to integrate you guys into this process. And so I look at this and I'm saying, should we be getting your feedback right now about what these priorities are? Because if you if you come before budget, do I really have the advisory board's opinion right now about, do, does your budget break it down this much? Does my budget- you, When you come for like budget approval and stuff, are you breaking it down by project or- Yeah, so when you get your budget book that you haven't seen yet, you'll right. see a CIP and you'll see a narrative for every right. one of these projects. And right. that you'll say, okay, why are we doing it? Yeah. So there's a narrative to every project that comes to you. So what would be great right now is if you guys tell me if you agree with this, if you think there's maybe something that should be different, some sort of just discussion, like, hey, I think that's great, ADA. I mean, I think what you're proposing makes yeah. sense. But I'm not here. It's hard to do it without the seeing the, what yeah. the numbers yeah. mean, yeah. if I'm being honest. Right. Yeah. Personally and professionally, I didn't, and I'm trying not to be disrespectful. I didn't, I don't think this group is capable of making that decision yet. I don't think that's that I, 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 That's what he got educated for. Right? Well, not only that is I haven't had the chance and that's why the next part of this meeting is to talk about, you know, what's in the report, how do we use it? And then like you're at, like the council's asking, what are those priorities going forward? This is gonna take months of conversation with this group to kind of understand what the priorities are because and when we get to it, I broke it out into the six goals and there's goals, there's objectives, there's action items in the master plan. Um, and uh, you guys are gonna have to give me feedback on at that point. Like some of the ADA things, when we make a change, we have to do. We have to do. If somebody goes to a park and says, I can't get there and we made a change, those are things we should be doing. Now, do we have to make every possible thing? Like I just had a conversation with Little League. They want to replace bleachers and put new bleachers in it at the softball field. I said, that's great. But when you design a pad, one of the pads has to be ADA accessible so we can get a wheelchair to it. So those are the, that's how I would prioritize some of the ADA things. Like when we put a, a water bubbler in at Memorial Park is one of the things that's been pushed. Uh, it's last year's project, which we haven't done because I haven't had staff time yet. Um, There'll need to be a walkway to it because you got to get a be able to wheelchair to get to the water fountain when you put it in. So most things have to have a consideration. ADA also provides more stability for senior with a walker and, and uneven ground, provides somebody with a stroller. So ADA also helps um, you know, those demographics as well. So I think the information that you provided us for the budget is great and helpful for us talking about stuff at, later, but I think we have a lot of other things that we need to go to. And I think that we need to figure out what those are going to be and maybe cap a time of conversation for each of those topics so that we can have a discussion about it and decide if it's good and we can move on or if we need to discuss it at a later point. I think what it, whatever we choose is going to be ramifications. Planning, I mean, like that, you know, it's, we're not going to think he's going to tell us that, oh, you, you need that pad for ADA compliance, you know, if, if we were to say that, you know, we wanted the, the bleachers. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I, I guess I have to figure out what resources that the expectation for the board is back and forth, because there's certain things that I think that I'm going to have to come to you guys and say, this is something we have to do for X, Y, and Z purposes. We are doing this project. And, and, and we have options. So what would we like to do? You know what I mean? How big, how small, how long, you know, what level do you want to go to? Those are choices that an advisory board can be super helpful to. When we're talking about round level have tos, if you guys want to dive that deep, that's that's a whole nother ball of wax that 
Um, and you're capable of making the decisions on right. what is a top priority in the end. I think the board should advise you on what, you know, each individual would feel as a priority project that then you can weigh into your decision on how you prioritize everything as a department because you know the operation, you know what needs to get done immediately, you know, next term, next year, in the following years, and so on. Um, I don't think that we should dive too deep into that. Agreed. I think just Agreed. giving you a general idea of what our thoughts are, not this year, I think that's too the ship has sailed for that um, in terms yeah, of I'm this. happy to give any feedback or comment or question or if somebody's got a particular question or dive into uh good or bad I mean that's eventually that's where I'm hoping we're at when we're building going through the master planning piece um being able to get that input and, and 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 also being able to get more community input you know around we have the conversation around um Blue Point Park all the time the swings that are there we just haven't committed to what that what that park is because it turns into there's only so much parking. It's it's more about we should probably be having a neighborhood meeting to say how do you guys want to use that in walking distance and can we get access from the back? Like I think that's where when we talk about some of the things in the master plan that are listed, the outreach and the input, that's where I think this advisory board is going to be super helpful. Let's like, hey, let's go hold a meeting in the Pinefoot neighborhood to talk about Blue Point Park. What do you like? What do you like? How do you use it? I don't know all those answers, and I can't pretend to. I can tell you that. I took the swings off because the swing set is not compliant because there's no surfaces, safety service, and it's six inches off the fence. And that swing set should have been taken out 30 years ago. What was interesting is in the parking facility plan, they said just throw some swings up and you'll be all set there, which I was like, wait a minute. That's yeah. not true. Yeah, that's again. <laughs> and that made me second guess a little bit. Yes, I, I, I did catch that after the fact. And a lot of times you've got designers versus operational people versus right certification rule people and so um but yes. go slow, throw some some swings on there todd come on <laughs> not under my watch <laughs> <laughs> please and no thank you but so yeah so that's again high level budget piece just you know again trying to jam it into a, a quick time frame without deep diving too much um i think a lot of our questions are going to be coming forward once we dive into the next yeah. the next phase of things um but I'd be happy to answer what that looks like. Thank you, Todd. Um, yeah, unless anyone has anything pressing right now on, on budget, so Todd can, you can meet with Todd afterwards. Um, and once I get final from or what I can bring forward to council, there's going to be council workshops and the you know, finance committee and all that stuff is going to happen in the next month. Yeah, so. So that gives us roughly 45 minutes to start tackling our next task. It's supposed to eight. It's supposed to go to 7.30, right? Yeah. But okay. We've got 15 half minutes. An hour. So yeah. Half yeah. an hour, we'll break it in the middle. Yeah. Um, so item eight is the task uh, that town council handed us. Um, Are we skipping item seven? Oh. oh. Yeah. We've been talking about them for like four months. Why are we still talking about them? Well, I. <laughs> <laughs> why is this an Good issue? Good question. I don't know why I skipped over that. Sorry. Sub item seven is gold. I, I think that's going to be tabled. I thought we did that last week. No. Last we, month. We, we did we not. Decide you know, we didn't on vote the goals. On. We, like, well, we got down to three. We got down to three goals. It was community center task. Um, and then we were waiting on town council's goals. <laughs> each review beach fees, community center tasks, access and to the beaches. Dogs. Yeah, access, and, and access, access to beaches. That's right. And access to I those we were the week after we had that meeting that that dog attack happened on Pine Point Beach, and I thought of the oh, city. I didn't hear about that. Oh, yeah. 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 Did you not? No. A, no. a dog like viciously attacked about. another dog. I guess at I oh, think it was Pine Point it Beach. It was in the news. And then it was, it was right after we met. Was that here? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I heard about it, but I didn't know it was yeah. here. Were they on leashes? No, they They're were not. That's why. And, yeah. and it literally was Voice right after yeah. And it, I literally was like, this is exactly what you need yeah, to I continue thought. that conversation. It well, was, where do we take it? What? Well, that's like, one of our to continue the conversation. Well, and I think that's yeah. where, so the, the charge, and I don't want to, go ahead. I think the charge of the, the, the sorry, council of going through this map, I think it'll touch base on shaping some of these goals because it talks about you know in the, the master plan 
beach access, trail access, how do we create those things? And so I think that, you know, back to Emily's point of not setting those goals, I think we've got it around kind of wait and see what yeah. council's goals were, but then now the charge of council is about doing some recommendations, some implementation pieces that when you, when you go through the master plan, it talks about what was important is beach access, yeah. which parking, dogs, all those things create access, reduce, that, reduce access. So I think that, and then going back to the fee structure, what are you, why are you raising fees and what are you going to use them for as a projection? So that's all. So on the minutes from February, we had stuff listed, but I don't know that anything was like decided or voted on or confirmed. It was continue pursuing a community center until an ad hoc committee is formed. That's happened. Great yeah. job. Uh, we, <laughs> Check. Yeah. yeah. But they have We still. But we, we still need to continue to yeah, like. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, formation and management of trails mm -hmm. and trail connectivity. Review the beach fees and utilizing previous data and the beach use with dogs in premises. Um, so I I think of those. I think collectively everybody was able to share a little bit of, of those things, but. Um, and another goal that I think that we should personally have is the creation of a volunteer system for community services. So that could be like us reaching out into like our own neighborhoods and associations and seeing the best way to reach people and how we can form a base that can help with programs or parks or beaches or people who are bored and need something to do. Are there those people? Yeah. yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> so are you adding that as a goal? I would like to. So that means we need to take up goals in order for you to add it. They weren't really, we didn't vote on them or any of them were approved. We had like sort of come to the conclusion that we liked these ones. Can I ask you a yes. question about this? Sorry. The, so like, what's the timeline on um, the town council has asked us to review parks and rec does, or parks and facilities master plan. Does that take precedence over these? And is there a timeline on this? Because I think these goals were 2023 goals. Or, well, so then they if, said June 6th. Oh my gosh. What? To have this to report reviewed. back to town council. They, they were appreciative that that's a very short deadline. And I told them that this meeting was about budget. So that's fine. And I did say that too when they made, when they approved it that night. I said, with the caveat that there's, there's going to be no full blown recommendation. In. I know. Are they looking for us to say, like, yes, move forward with. This well, so or, what I hear is because you guys this feels like a big goals. recommendation. Can on we there? go into the parks plan and pick out stuff so, that coincides with these goals? Do we want so, to table goals and talk about this because this is a whole. There's a lot in this piece that I gave you. That's my question. Like, is this supposed to supersede all of this? It's March, though. Our next I, meeting is in June. That's right. halfway through the year. How can you set goals if we're halfway through the year already? You can take your goals and find them in there. I think you can find a way to implement your goal. My guess is there's somewhere in the parks and facility plan, something somewhat touching on something that you want to accomplish. Um, when we talk about beach use, I'm sure they have some guidelines and recommendations there is my, would be my first inclination is can we carry the goals that you guys are listing right now and find them and then say, oh, look it, the goals that we have are actually in this and now we can substantiate it and recommend it. I mean, I, th I definitely think that they are like what's right. listed here is is in there several times right you know so it's a matter of if we approve these as like our overall setting goals you know individually we could go through and pick out I think you guys can set your goals and then you can i mean i think battling the parks plan is a different thing if we can have it coincide with what the goals you want if that makes sense mm -hmm. and if it doesn't come out of the recommendation it doesn't mean we can't continue that goal on this level <laughs> if that makes sense. so start with our goals that's what you're saying I think it's good to know what the priorities are. So, because I find that it's very overwhelming and there's so much information in there that I can't go back through every page. Right, so you exactly. got to think about what our priorities and which well, I you see want to our, vote our, I see our priority right now is the directive from the town council. Correct. Yep. So if our consensus goals happen to fit, that's great. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I think what we need to do is come start setting a plan we've got to add a couple more meetings um we need to kind of divide and conquer this by coming up with through the recommendations of the master plan but also the community survey that's not even two years old yet has a majority of what the town that thousand people 
that <laughs> responded to it as our footprint. Yeah, I think the survey for me carries a lot of weight. I've referenced it a lot. Um, I think you're going to find stuff that you like in it and people care about the beaches. And, um, no, I, I agree. I mean, the big fat elephant in the room is community center. That's one of the top priorities in there. So I, I think once we start establishing, that's why I was hoping that people would come up with the top five to submit and we can just goals from top five what? Uh, wants from the community survey or sorry, the master plan. Mm -hmm. But I uh, had Todd made some copies of part of the community survey that tied directly into what the community wants. Yeah, and I think we gotta look at both. We have our oh, wants, yeah. but then we also have to consider, you know, what the consensus is, what everyone's saying. Right. So I think it'd be very easy for you guys to come back to town council in June and say, we want a community center with a pool. Boom, we're done, <laughs> great, love it. You know? But I think, yeah. And so when you talk about trail access and connectivity, that is, um, you know, I almost wonder if you should have a subcommittee or something because the transportation committee is dealing with that. And so you would want to do that. What? Can we create our own subcommittee? I thought of a subcommittee when Emily was talking about volunteer systems because I think I think that's a great idea that maybe a subcommittee might be able to get together and think of ways to come up with a to create a volunteer system. When it talks about trail connectivity, I think my first step would be reach out to the transportation commission a committee and talk to Angela Blanchett, who's the town engineer who's in charge of all that, and say, Are you guys having these discussions? I think they are. I know they are on some level, and I know they do in certain meetings. So we could definitely bring those two together because I mean that is part of our goal overall is mm -hmm. conservation and you know preserving land and connectivity. I mean one of the goals is transportation and connectivity, um, and also trying to get these boards all in a line and working together. Um, I find trail connectivity overwhelming on this level. So I think transportation department would be a good place to go if that's one of the goals. So then more or less we have five goals here but I, I need to maybe put something more than beach use parentheses dogs. Uh, beach to, access. Like what it- You could say, I mean, you could say beach operations. Uh, you know, you could say, yeah, but be, beach access. operations, what? Yeah. Like what, it, what are we- Beach access for humans. <laughs> yeah. Human beach access. <laughs> but what about the beach, like making it better? Like well, safer. A, I, mean, I was gonna say, say I think safer. Is safety right is word. huge. It, it, uh, safety. Well, safe, more safer and attainable beach access. Improve and expand facilities, parks, and amenities. Can we just pull the language from the? But that's plan? so general, though. Like how could like I understand that it's a goal, but that's so it could, could cover so many things. And I think if we want to set a goal, it needs to be attainable. That can we can actually provide an action plan behind it. Agreed. I guess I'm now getting confused. So <laughs> the town council basically community center. <clears throat> like if we're going to our track, to your point, we made five, whatever. So trails, community center, pool. Um, so those are kind mm -hmm. of what we're all in support of, primarily the community center. Then separately, I agree with you, we need more detailed goals that fall mm -hmm. under that umbrella. So I sort of view that we're on parallel tracks, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so your point, what's the most important in terms of timing? What we need to tell the town council. Right. So we yeah. get a chance to dive through the, the, yes. this golden piece. So yes. yeah. to Emily, to everybody's point, and, and whatever we want to do, I, I I do like the way they broke this out. So I gave you I gave you this head mm -hmm. sheet just as a note sheet. Yeah. And the reason why I did it is they specifically call out those six categories yeah. as the top goal that they found through all their work. Yeah. So, and so so that we can move forward in an orderly way. Yeah. I'm going to suggest that we stick to the agenda and take up goals, go around the table very quickly, ask if anybody wants to add a goal or to give an opportunity to Emily to add in volunteers and then table that topic until the next meeting and then move on to the discussion of the new business, which is, and then I'd ask that Todd continue with that thought and, and make a sort of a quick presentation about what that is all about in those six categories so that we can get a little bit done in the little time that we have remaining here. So. Sounds good to me. We don't need a motion for that, Art. It's already on the agenda. <laughs> so let's just discuss it like in about 30 seconds. I'm going to say move the table. But I don't want, I'm not doing that to cut you off. No, I want I've... it on, I want it on the table. <laughs> But then we'll move on. Well, if we go, but if we go around and everybody says it, is there a reason we can't just approve them tonight? 
Mm, yep. Yep. Some of these things are going to require a little bit of discussion and okay. some of them may actually require some coordination, I mean, coordination and some prioritization with the um, goals that are articulated in the facilities plan. So okay. I don't think we're there, but it's definitely worth putting those items on and anything else that anybody has as well. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, my goal is community center flat out. <laughs> So do we want to maybe adjust Same. what's in here because it says until an ad hoc committee is formed. So maybe adjust that to say like something not, not involving an ad hoc committee? Support or? ad hoc committee or okay. support effort, community center effort, whatever that yeah. means. Okay. Some sort of support word because then you'll have representation on that board yeah. once you get to that point, the committee excuse. Is the ad hoc committee made up of, um, I know you said it was the previous people who were involved in that and town council and residents. Two from, right. people two from, from here. Yep, so oh, there'll be well. three okay. from the prior board, two from this board, and then four <laughs> at large. Yeah. And then four non-voting. Two town councils, one from the library and one from school. Yes, board. that's what it was, library and school. Okay. okay. So support the ad hoc committee for the community center. Good. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you. Next. Next. Um, well, that's the big one. Also, and then beach access that we've already talked about. Yeah. So safer uh, beach accessibility, or just safer beach access. I can't even bring my kids to the beach anymore. So safer beach safe, access. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I have nothing new to add. I've already talked about trail connectivity, and that's already on the table. So. So formation and management of trails and trail connectivity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Ditto, ditto, ditto. <laughs> we can add in their coordination with the transportation committee, though, as Karen suggested. I'll look into that for you guys. Thank you. And you're on trails? I'm on all three of those. Okay. <laughs> Nothing to add. Okay. And you're adding volunteers. Mine was the formation of a volunteer base to support mm -hmm. the community services platforms. I'd second the community out the outreach piece. Yeah, I think that's a great, yeah, a great <laughs> initiative for this board to, to take on. And I have limited information about these other than what's right in mm -hmm. front of me, but I absolutely support the community center one. Okay. Okay, I move to table <coughs> discussion of goals until our next meeting so that we can move on to the next. Is that you? Meeting. I'll second that. All in favor? Good. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, item eight, the council action. I, I question the date on that, Karen. It says February 1st. <laughs> We met before this went to town council last month. No, that's when it was first presented to council. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. That's okay. when, so people know that it was, it's been. Gotcha. Okay. It was, it was, and then it came to the town council to us yes. after our meeting from last month. Gotcha. Yes, okay. Um, so Todd had started to talk about the um, that sheet and you were talking about the categories and I was, I cut you off and I'd like to hear about that. Um, so I just put this together as a framework. That the one is just kind of a visual because there's a lot in here. And when you break it down simply, all this says, not all, but they've identified through all their work, research, focus groups, surveys, the, and then their professional. These are the six categories that they broke the high level goals out for the master plan. Um, and then when you when you open it up and look at these, they break them down, you know, into the theme areas, but they break them down into goals, objectives, and action items. And so when you look at it, um, you know, you know, for example, uh, uh, pick any one of these. We'll pick the first one. Where it says continue to improve organizational efficiencies. That's the goal. And then they break down multiple objectives within that in that scope where it says. Objective one, continue to enhance and improve external, internal and external communication regarding department activities and services. And then they give you um, a write-up about that. So that's there. They've done that for each one of those goals and they've broken out multiple um, objectives um, through those. If you go along, um, and, and this is where I think, and I, I can't pull them out right now because I didn't break them out based on based on the four goals you just identified. But I think those all fit into a category somewhere, whether that's 
you know, beach environment, you know, whether that's access or cleanliness or all those things, those were all brought out in the master plan in some point or another, um, as well as fees and parking. Those are all referenced in the master plan. Um, when you talk about outreach, um, to Emily's just go about the volunteer piece, um, what a great vehicle to get the word out to get the things and get input back. Um, so again, that, that's all part of goal one. Goal two is to continue improve program and service delivery and then go through and list out objectives. Um, and then they tell you a little bit about feedback through all of these. Again, goal three was improve and expand facilities, parks and amenities. Again, three objectives. Goal four was the ADA. Five, this is a tougher one for me because I think it's a little more objective is increase financial opportunities. And I think that is really based on what you choose to do and what that, because one of the recommendation was what crowd surfing or something, you know, that's, you know, those only have specific uses. It's not something we're going to do on a regular basis for an operational budget, but it's a perfect thing for a playground fundraiser or, you know, a certain piece, a memorial piece, you know, you know those, every, every financial opportunity has a, a, a best use, if you will. Um, outside of our normal sources, which are, you know, taxation and fees. Um, and then uh, six is improved maintenance and operational plans um, and this objectives. And um, and just to be transparent, Alex, you know, Alex working for the city of Portland and Parks, we met for a couple hours this afternoon talking about the maintenance stuff, challenges he has, we have, because a lot of them is creating standards. And it's really hard to set all those things until you have your plan in place and you know, when they say set maintenance standards, how often, how much, what are you going to spend? Um, it's really hard to put those together. It's almost easy to start the other way and say, okay, based on the resources we have now, what can we do? And you set your standard on that. And if that's not good enough, okay, here's how we need to get to the standard that you guys want to have at your parks. Because we could all say we want more parks and we want better mows and the trash can empty three times. And you never want to see a piece of paper on the the bathroom floor or the flag never ripped those all take people's space and time and so um, sometimes it's better to work backwards into some of those things um, the second part of this piece is it takes these goals um, and breaks them down into the objectives and action steps so it just it simplifies a little bit more um, so like that first goal was continue to improve organizational efficiencies they give you the objective again, but then they give you the, the action items that they're recommending. So it tells you things you could be doing to accomplish that. Yeah. And some things are like, okay, we're doing that, but maybe we could do it better. Or we're not doing that one at all. Or maybe we invest some more resource. And then they tell you an estimated uh, capital cost, operational budget impact, and then timeframes are listed out there. So I, I do like this section, the way they've broken it out. It, it, it will at least brings a lot of points for conversation. Um, I think the hardest part um, when we get into the project piece and what's the priorities at that level, we have so many priorities. You know, we have priorities for maintenance to keep things at certain levels, whether that's um, safety, whether that's just efficiency, whether that's playability. You know, if you talk to any of the youth groups, it's like, yes, Peterson's great, but in the fall, you can't use this corner of that field for, for six weeks because it's wet. Or you can't get on that infield because the material is bad and it gets sloppy. And, you know, when any time rains, you can't plan it for two days. And so, like, those are things that deal with the now. And so you're either improving a safety item, uh, increasing the level of service, which may be playability, or uh, adding amenities. Like, we want more benches. We want a water fountain. We want uh, a place, a dog park, a tire, or post. You know, those type of things are choices that I think feedback from this group and committee will be helpful. Um, and then there's expansion. And that's that's a whole nother kind of conversation around um, what people are asking for. So it's it's maintaining what we have, um, safety, and then future expansion. And that's that's a that's a bigger topic. And even that will have to come into priorities. Um, we're dealing with it every day at council level at our meetings, like why are we talking about a community center when the school's on the table right now? Why are we talking about a school when the community Sounds center was like my meeting this week? Well, why are we when and my answer is the community center was the number one thing on the, the town lawn. Yep. But I do agree as a parent and a yeah. past student is that our, our schools are important. You know what I mean? So I don't want to pit the community center against the school. So but you can play that game any way you want. This to me is an operational manual. 
and we'd be in the weeds yeah. if we did as an advisory board. Dying. I think they're looking for us within two months yeah. to say what is the top priority and let you figure out how to do it, and then you come and consult us if there are decisions to be made. Okay. okay. Community yes. center. Yeah. Community center. Community center. <laughs> That's what we're recommending. And if the town council in their role has to weigh schools versus community center, how about it? We elected right. you to do that. That's our recommendation because this basically you read this it's like do everything better yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i mean no, that of me. course you pay the consultant. Well. <laughs> about how much yeah but remember you pay them that if they didn't yeah, yeah. produce this report right, right. they wouldn't be doing their job yeah. and they wouldn't have other business this is of course they're going to tell you to do it better yeah. take it with a grain of salt yeah. like i work with consultants all the time yeah. right that's they have to justify their salary yeah. um don't so don't don't this, we can't do this now for the yeah. town council. I'm here in community center. Right. We already got the community center. Right. Do we? Well, yeah. So like, <laughs> I mean, I'm talking the ad hoc committee is happening. So I, I, in my, in my interpretation, town council is already supporting the idea of a community center. I mean, and I think it might, if you had seen the comments, I mean, people are supporting that we do the ad hoc. So, I mean, I, I want you guys to say we support a community center, but I also want you to come with other things beyond that, I guess is what okay, I'm saying. Okay, trails. Uh, Trail expansion, parks and facilities. My recommendation is for town council to do something about it. Yeah, right. There I, you go. I'm, right. So, I'm sorry. You know, <laughs> community center has been on the table for over 20 years. Right, right. <laughs> I was trying to be nice, yeah. and, and I'm not oh, yeah, it's and I'm not pointing fingers at you. The town council just it's all about development. Yeah, let it go. We don't we do anything. Council. Oh, trying. we'll do a survey. Well, this we was the survey. third survey right. in the yeah. last <laughs> four years, right? Maybe five. But now we're going to get another ad hoc committee, right? To regurgitate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So maybe the recommendation ago. is to add a time frame onto that. So instead of saying, you know, the action item, do something about it, it's do, you know, do these actions within this time frame, this this yeah. time period. Yeah. Oh, so we, we do have a time frame for the community center, and the goal is the is the November 2024 ballot. That is our goal. It is in our charge. That is our goal. We can't predict what the school is going through. I, I mean, oh, honestly, no. it is getting worse by the day. To be honest, it's good or bad it's not great and I, I don't think we need to continue pushing forward as you said because this is what our community wants and they've wanted for a long time i'm hoping this new council will continue who is new on the council besides you uh nick mcgee uh he yeah but he's he, he was, was in june he right, was right, right in june and then before that um, it's all the same. Else has been on it forever. Oh, April. So then April. Yeah, Slider, I think Don right. Hamill is the only one that's been on it since the community ad hoc committee. The first one. Well, Jean Marie Caterina. Oh, sorry. You're yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, Those yeah. two have been. Those on two it. have been on. I think everyone else is in the last five years. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's a new. It's it a definitely new. is. I mean, I think we got a great chair and we're very motivated. And I think we've gotten a lot of stuff done already. So. To Emily's point and Art's point. And to your point about concern about the town council and that the school is this other red herring, can we shift our goal to say we want something done, but we want to work part of that is working with the schools to get it done? Getting like the community, community center, center in, or should they be separate? Mm -hmm. So, the, I mean, the, the school board would be part of the ad hoc committee. So they already kind of have their foot in with the community center. And last time we talked to the school committee, they were waiting, like they were interested in collaborating with us, but they were waiting on the land. Right. I, I do remember. not think that they're going to find land that's big enough for board. two facilities. Uh, okay. when, I think when we talked to the um, school oh, build committee. Yes, sorry. Yeah, it wasn't school, yeah, school right, build right, committee. Right, right, right. Yeah, they were yeah. looking at one piece of land that was really big and it's not available anymore. And so I, I, I really just, I personally don't think that combination is going to happen. And so, but we feel that we have to give them priority. No, because you mean council priority or no, the school build. Well, we can't. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna say <laughs> um, um, you have to watch that play out. You know, if people aren't going to support consolidated school, I don't know how we could. If, if the voters are saying, Karen, we don't support it. I'm not going to go and say, I continue to support it, even though everyone that elected me doesn't. 
Um, that's going to play out the way it's going to play out. I, I'm continuing to say that they're doing their own thing and we have a survey that says we want a community center. And that's kind of why this whole timeline is we had the parks and facility plan approved. We approved the ad hoc committee and now I'm going to do an article about it and we're trying to continue the momentum. And then what we are is we're a year or two behind where the school is right now. We're about a year behind. And we're also a smaller project, so we don't need as much time. Um, I, you don't know what's going to happen to the school. I think we need to continue forward, and I think we're going to be a lot more organized, and our project is not as big and a lot more palatable to people. And I think what's different about our the project as a community center, but also as the first ad hoc, and I'm saying this because we're being recorded, so people, is that the first ad hoc had a much different charge. They were specifically looking at an offer from the downs for property, build lease, and was that viable? That was a completely different animal. A lot of work they did, survey work, research, We that this new ad hoc will have that. The advantage this ad, new ad hoc will have, they will also, when we hire, them, you know, put the RP out and hire the firm, they will have a firm to be the connectivity point of this project where, you know, looking at property, doing financial analysis, design and development, uh, revenue projections. This firm will be tasked for a lot of that work based on the comments and feedback of the ad hoc committee. Um, the other advantage that we have over most projects is that there's two, maybe three things that are the most important thing in any community center school build project uh, is the uh, is survey work. We've done all that ahead of time, right? So that's not something, we, normally you'd hire a company to go do all the search. We've done that. So that's that's a done. Master plan, that's a big thing on the list, done. And then the most important one is the comp plan, done. Those are all things that a consultant would have to spend time. They're just gonna be able to go in and dive into the data that we've already created. So that's months, that's maybe a year's worth of work that they already have done. So that's a huge piece in our timeline. Uh, so I have two things in here, recommending that the town council create action items towards the creation of a community center within a time frame of six months, a year. <laughs> did they make an act? Because they did say in the, in the charge, I think the charge mentions bringing stuff back for the budget process, for next budget process, and um, being prepared to put it on the uh, November 24th. Yes. I think with the two timeline things, Emily, they set. Okay, probable so cost year. estimates by February 2024 for inclusion in the fiscal year 25 capital budget, capital plan and budget, and all of their deliverables by July 2024. So really, that's our charge. No, no. no this no, is the ad hoc. Oh. <clears throat> About. So they need to figure all of that stuff out prior to February so that they know what. To, um, what to put there, yeah. We've got nine months. So nine months? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So recommending the town council create action items towards the creation of community center within a time frame of nine months for Oops. budget approval on for 2024. November 2024. Nice. So is that starting now too? Uh or is that starting January to November. What's the time? What is the time frame we're giving them? Now. Now. Now to nine months from now. Yeah. Yes. Okay. To February of next year. Is that nine? Basically. So February is nine months. Okay. Or just say February. Yeah. In case I went off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then the other one was recommending. So be, I think you be more specific about the trails. Like what about them do you want to have fixed or updated or connected or? Could you be more specific? I think we need another meeting. So that. That okay. is a huge conversation. So okay. it's great that you guys are bringing it up and not realizing that it is happening in a lot of other committees. And it's a big okay. thing when I was on planning board is about especially the downs. The downs is what we're playing with constantly. And we were just like, well, your trail goes, you know, that was the, literally part of their process was connecting all of their lots and making it walkable. Um, I just texted Nick to see if, so I'll find out if I, I the transportation committee definitely deals with this. Um, yeah, I think maybe, I maybe, a, maybe a vote on an action item to have somebody or direct me to uh, reach out to town staff to find out where or how we get involved in the discussion. Yep. 
So you were specifically asking for the goals and you had said like, you know, we get the community center is that one thing that we're giving them, which we have created with that time frame, And then you had said to also provide them or like with another one, if they're like, okay, we heard that one, we need something else. Um, they want recommendations. Yeah, so I, they want to hear, I, I think, I think you want to give them five because you might yes. have three counselors go, well, I don't like your top three. Yes. And there's one that, I mean, there are people that are going to do that. Okay. And so I think we you need wanna... at least another meeting, if not two. Okay. Um, to get something with some meat and potatoes. So this June, so we're ignoring this June deadline then? Well, or does it need to be decided prior to that June deadline? We need to have another meeting to decide. Yeah, I, I think before we finalize anything, I mean, I, it's great, it's recorded, mm -hmm. but I think we will need to vote on it as a committee or as a board. Right, but you said, an, I'm asking like you had said another meeting, like we don't meet again until oh, oh, yeah, June. Sorry, so sorry. The, their June deadline that was set here, like we would need to meet prior to this June deadline to come up with them, to give it to them? Uh, is it, we on the same page? We was May. it every other month? So would it be May? What do we mark? We meet okay. May, May. I, okay. I, I would suggest if we can meet in April. Okay. Yes, I am. At least. I think you should. And we'll I'll probably try to initiate an email conversation in between. Okay. So we have two potential recommendations started. And then if we can incorporate meeting in April and May, those two meetings can then have us get to maybe five, which we can then have for them for that June meeting. Yes. Yes? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a sense of how granular they should be? Like access to the beach, which is one of our goals. Can we say that? Um, or, or we want improvement. I mean, one of the other things was, I don't know, programming. That was one of the other things. Is that, do we just need to say standing for, like what exactly? It, it, I guess I'm I would be confused. as detailed as possible about how you want to implement it. Yeah. If you guys have thoughts about how this can be implemented and how detailed, I think that's better. They want to hear from you. I'm not kidding. Like I, they literally I, want to hear from residents. I don't they know what more to say. I think if I we agree. could come up like, with five or so. Well, no, but I mean, when you talk about safer beaches, you do need to say we, no, you know, trash cans, leashes. The dogs. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, making hard recommendations uh, about, you know, not allowing dogs at a certain beach. I mean, they want to hear hard recommendations that from the residents that you support. But those feel secondary to the community center that we're so, all. In my mind, the community center is a whole nother beast yeah. that comes out of this that is just going on its own trail. You guys support it. They know you support it because I sit in every meeting and I'm like, I'm on this advisory board and we all want a community center. They know you support it. I think it's going through here and picking other things that maybe are more actionable. I mean, we want to, we, we're talking about quick wins. Are there some things in here that we can improve the town that we can do somewhat quickly? And then other things, community centers can be a long, a long one, but is there some other things? Yeah. I a wish volunteer we could like, system, safer beach access. Is there certain rules or things that we can do quickly? Think, it hasn't been there yeah. before. These are, I feel like these are, those questions you're asking now, I feel like are Todd questions about how how to implement some of the recommendations should well, not be I, I want recommendations. I don't mean implementation at all. I don't want implementation. I want like like detailed recommendations though. Like what you say, you know, we want to do trail connectivity. Give some examples. Yeah. Say, okay, you know, we talked to the transportation committee and they said at this location we can do this. So I, so I think building on what we have here, so instead of saying create action items, we create the action items for them. I, or, I think or, it's a reference. Okay. It's, you know, we give our opinion on what we want to recommend. Where did we get that recommendation from? Well, we, we looked at this survey, we looked at that survey, we talked to the beach people or, or whatever. It's the attack of the dogs on the beach, you know. We recommend this, which is outlined and already broken down for you in the plan, and this is why we recommend it, right? Yeah. But I mean, I, I, again, I feel like Todd has an, an overall understanding of exactly what he's already doing out of this plan, mm -hmm. yeah, and things that he little tweaks he could make to take the next step. And I think that we probably just need you to tell us like 
or guide, kind of guide that decision or guide I think that it process. Can educate us. Well, I think this is an advisory board. Right. So the council is specifically looking right. for guidance. So yeah. you can say, I want trails, and then Todd can say, I appreciate it, but this is why right. this wouldn't work for us. And then we have to decide if we don't care that it's going to make Todd's life a living hell. And we want to make Ellen happy instead. <laughs> I, I'm being honest about what the council is like. I don't know what they were like in the past. I have to go back and tell them this conversation happened or it didn't happen. That this was Todd's recommendation and everyone agreed with it, or this was Art's recommendation and everyone supported it. That's the difference that I'm really trying to tell you guys here. Todd is a wealth of information. He can we can he can kill our goals and our recommendations, but they need to be ours. So I want to be, what I need clarification, I'm not the of the waters anymore. I need just guidance when you guys want, need something from me. I am all, I will promise you, I am always going to be, I love that. This is a challenge. This is a, this is, you know what I mean? Or how do we get there? That's where I feel like I can support, but I would love to hear. And that's why when Art sent his email out, um, what are the two or three, high level topics and I think that's where you guys can dial out the action items mm -hmm. you know if it's creating a re resident beach environment what does that mean you can list out review beach fees to um common uh, uh review dog you know you can list out those things that what what are the challenges um you know look at uh in, you know improving trail our trail system that's broad but then you have your you know your goals of like okay uh, meeting with the, the, the council like or sidewalks or parks or you might be very specific like I live in the Blue Point area and I want to trail the Blue Point Park. That's a very specific thing. Then whether it's council or me, I can then come back and say, here's what it takes to do that. Because that's what council is going to eventually come back and ask me for. I'm going to say they can't because it's landlocked and you can only come from the sidewalk. So if you want to improve the sidewalk on Black Point Road to make it safer and a bigger buffer, that's that's a different um, that's a different conversation. You know what I mean? As far as what I what what I would recommend, I'm going to continue to go through here and keep making operational decisions along the way. But I think you know you guys kind of figure personally what your couple two, three, five you know most important things, and I think then you can just agree on what those are and target them down to a level to be able to bring back to Karen. Well, and they're balancing the recommendations from Todd and from the residents. Yeah. So you guys represent the residents. So they want to hear the feedback between what the director wants and what they're hearing from the residents. Does it mean yeah. residents are always going to get what they want? Do we want to create, you had started, I think, one, and Todd, you work in the Google environment. Do we want to create a Google Doc that everyone can dump in what their comments are so that we have a starting point at our next meeting? Like, Staffing, service levels, improvement in facility, just dump, do a brain dump in there and start to cross some off. No, that makes no sense, but at least we have a starting point for the conversation. Yes. Yeah. So he he shared the March folder, which is what all of these um, uh, things are in. So I can just create a new doc that's in there that everybody already has access to in this folder. And then I don't know if I shared it to everybody. Can you double check when you? I don't know if I got I think it. I only shared it I to the thing. It was just, I think it's oh, the chair, okay, okay. vice chair, and because oh, that's what I was dropping in agendas and minutes and stuff. But you can share that with everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. then I will do that. Yes. <clears throat> yes, I will do that. And it yeah. doesn't need to be like, just do a dump in there. Yeah. Like, one of mine is staffing at that service level. I don't know. We can talk about it then. But just so we have a laundry list of things that we can start to converse about. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. So next month, the the third Thursday is April twentieth. Which is school vacation, which is fine for, for me. But yeah. we've got plenty of stuff to do. Yeah, <laughs> is that a problem for people? I'm flying, I'm, I'm flying back that day, so I don't think I'd be. My flight lands at four in Boston, so I would not. I don't think be back in time. <laughs> it's uh, has been hard for us to reschedule. No, I can do what you need to do. Yeah. I'm always happy to call in to meetings, but I don't know if you do that. April 13th. Does that conflict? I mean, I am, that's our staff, just selfishly, that's our staff appreciation night for town. Oh, oh you yeah, can't do that then. Yeah. <laughs> we got moved from a snow date, so. <laughs> Actually, maybe that would be a good idea because then you'll all be in a great mood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We can just go there. I think we're bowling. Oh, nice. So the sixth or the twenty seventh? I'm good on either. I can't do the sixth. 
27th. Oh, I can't do the 27th. I could do the 6th. I'm out oh, of town okay. on the 27th. Why don't we stick with the 20th? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put my cell phone and call. Sounds good. So April 20th, 6 p.m. And then um, the agenda is strictly the yes. council recommendation polls. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Anyone have anything else before we take off? I'll move to adjourn and thank everyone. And welcome if anyone watches this online. <laughs> 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 <laughs>